let's get to the one that I am most terrified of. And that's the patient that's got WPW and then goes into an atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. And it's going fast. And you can't always tell if it's irregular or not. Mm -hmm. And this may be the one where you actually like get out your calipers and, and march it to see if it's irregular because this is the one you don't want to give adenosine to. Mm -hmm. And so if I have a patient that presents with a narrow, fast rhythm, how confident are you in identifying that it's irregular to know to not give adenosine if you didn't know that this patient had uh, an underlying WPW? Yeah. So with the AFib, it, it can be narrow and it can be regular. I'm sorry. It, it can be narrow or it can be wide and it can look rather regular. But like you said, you got to be really, really careful. And so that's if, and then it kind of like a little bit of safety goes back to if these patients are unstable, everybody gets cardioverted, right? So we're talking about a stable patient. Maybe it's, maybe it's wide, uh, maybe it's narrow. And then maybe it's slightly irregular. Maybe it's not. Um, those would be great patients to do really making sure you're doing really high quality vagal maneuvers with because you want to see if there's any variability in the rate because if it is coming through the, the AV node and it's just AFib with RVR or something like that, you might, it's, it's, it's almost like giving a, a tiny bit of like diltiazem for a second where it's blocking that AV node through vagal tone. Um, if it's narrow, because if it's narrow, it's definitely coming through the AV node. You could have a, an opposite effect with that, where you slow the conduction through the AV node and the vagal maneuver causes those impulses to go through the bundle of Kent and actually increase the rate. So that would give you <laughs> a pretty good idea of what that problem might be. So you, you may see some variation in the rate, either up or down with, with those vagal maneuvers. Um, but these are definitely the patients that you don't give any AV nodal blocking agents. And that would even include that amiodarone. And so you really want to make sure that it's not irregular. Anything that's irregular and wide, you should just cardiovert right away. Um, and if it's irregular and narrow, um, I would probably say the same thing, like unless you have procainamide. Procainamide Best is the only thing. <laughs> What's that? I I see that uh, that Indiana Jones meme where it's like you must choose wisely because mm -hmm. that's I I don't say I've been burned on that because I haven't been burned on that one on an actual patient but I've had people send me ECGs and be like what would you do I'm like oh it looks like an AVNRT I don't know try some adenosine some vagal maneuvers and then they send me the game over Mario you know gif because oh well, that was WPW under underlying it and. I'm like, oh man, like, and, and I put in my peer review, it wasn't a peer review, it was more just a, a weird finding, but uh, these ECGs, if you just go on Google images and type in uh, WPW AFib, I feel like they all pop up and there's like these crazy high, like voltage amplitude, like R waves, like you see them like bleeding into each other. And so now, when somebody sends it and I see that, I'm like, oh, you know, I got to I got to take a, a second look at this. Let me get out my calipers and and see if this is actually uh, regular or irregular. But God, when it's going fast, it's super hard to tell. And I don't have an answer with how to to march that out um, or if there's a certain rate in which you're like, oh, that's underlying AFib underneath there. It's hard to tell. I mean, it's really hard to tell. And it's not like these patients are going to have a history of AFib because if they have a history of AFib and they have WPW, like that's the worst thing ever, you know? So I don't know. I mean, maybe they do, maybe they tell you they're on blood thinners, but it would almost be more helpful to know if they have WPW and if they're able to communicate that to you. Um, but, and, and I guess if you had a patient that is able to communicate that to you, they might fall in that somewhat stable arm of it where if they're yeah. not then you're going to cardiovert them anyway so that makes sense right so like if they're not able to communicate hey i have a history of wpw they're unresponsive then it doesn't really matter you're going to cardiovert them but if they can and they say hey i have wpw then that's like the other person and then there's the one that like doesn't know they have wpw 
And that's probably rare enough that as long as we have it on our radar and we do something and they go into VFib, at least we know why, you know, you kind of understand what it, what happened. Cause you, it may be, you may not be able to avoid that, but I really liked how you broke this down in the blog. You have a nice uh, treatment algorithm. That's probably the scariest subset right there. Um, but that's probably not a common occurrence. You're not going to see that that often. 